What is going on, everyone? Welcome to our second attempt at today's news tonight, episode 79. <laughs> I'm your host, because things are changing, failed episode to failed episode. Uh, I'm your host, Steve <laughs> Bowling. I'm joined, as always, by my co-founders in Good Vibes Gaming, uh, Derek Bittner in the upper left, Ash Paulson in the lower left. Yeah, I think everything's a little out of sync today. Yeah. Uh, and Dogs everything. and cats living together. It's, it's wild over yeah, here Yeah, right babies now. having babies, you know. <laughs> but uh, oh, as you can see, we are joined once again all the way from China by our good friend and special guest today, Dr. Lava. Uh, how you doing today, sir? Oh, no. Oh, Did no. No. Okay, I promise this is right. not a bad omen. <laughs> right, right. This YouTube is, just... is working today at least. So yeah, yeah YouTube it, is working. working. Yeah. Uh, are the trans, the transatlantic connection might not be working as well as I hope. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, we will, we will. Uh, or even the Trans Pacific. Oh yeah. yeah. I was a good. Oh, there he is. There he is. There we go. So uh, we are. We're gonna. Before we continue with the episode, I, I want to just get right into things, get down to brass tacks, if you will. Uh, this episode, as it was supposed to be yesterday, is sponsored by The Game Orb. And uh, this, oh, I already misread the copy because, you know, I'm off my game today. I'm a Friday guy, <laughs> usually. Anyway, The Game Orb is a fledgling channel focused mostly on Nintendo content. It's currently running Let's Plays of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Pac-Man, 99, Splatoon 2, Smash Ultimate, and more. Subscribe to the Game Orb at the link in the description. Let's get them to 250 subscribers, guys. I know that we said that yesterday, uh, and I don't anticipate that we got there today, but let's keep going and show them the GV Gang's support. They also want to promote their friend's YouTube channel, Galactic Reaper. You can find links to both of those pinned in the chat right now if you're watching live or down below in the description if you're watching this later on YouTube. Uh, thanks so much to the Game Orb for their incredible support, their sponsorship. Uh, it means the world to us. You help us make the content we want to make, and hopefully our audience is showing you the support that you need to get your channel growing. Uh, we appreciate you so, so much. Um, before Absolutely. Before we jump into the news uh just a quick reminder i know we talked about this yesterday but it's still true there's a today. lot of things that didn't go up in public in the channel so they yeah. gotta talk about it public service yeah. announcement uh resident evil 8 and famicom detective club uh details have leaked uh, basically the games are both out in the wild in one form or another so if you're trying to stay uh away from spoilers for those games just don't click on things, I guess. <laughs> don't dive too deep yes. into social media. Don't go too far into <laughs> hashtags because the games are out there. People have them. They're playing them. Speaking of which, Ash, uh, you and I just uh, <laughs> just talked about Famicom Detective Club, uh, The Missing Heir, and The Girl Who Stands Behind at length here on the channel uh, because yeah. as, as we kind of sort of implied, yeah, we've been playing them for a while. So... Yeah, we just yeah. did a preview. Uh, it's up on the channel now. It, it went up at uh, 6 a.m. this morning. It was a super early video. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in the games at all, Steve and I talk about what we're allowed to at length. We we keep spoilers to a minimum. Um, but uh, long story short, we've enjoyed what we played so far. So if you're curious about those games, certainly go check out our preview right here on the channel. Yeah, I, I still I, need to listen to that because I am interested in these two games. <laughs> I yeah. cannot wait be. to uh, talk more about about these games. I'm excited. After the preview, I kind of got more hyped to play them even more, uh, just because I find out a little bit more about Ash's game. Ash found out a little bit about my game, and there is some interesting overlap between the two that I think uh, I, I wasn't aware of. So they kind of make a really cool set when you consider them together. Yeah, I think so, too. Like, I, I hadn't even realized. It was kind of cool discovering that organically through our discussion, Steve. Like, you know, kind of getting the connective tissue between the games as we talked about them. We're like, oh, so that's what that kind of means and implies. Oh, that's how they're connected. Oh, now I really want to play the other one because I want to see the whole story here. So it was, uh, yeah, it was really cool. Um, and I, I think people who enjoy visual novels, at least so far from what we played, are going to get, uh, you know, get, get a good time out of these games. And we're seeing some comments in the chat saying they love the dual preview thank you all so much fantasy thinker fan joseph bayer thank you for the compliments we're really glad you enjoyed the dual preview format and we will bring that back for I mean, we're certainly going to be doing a dual review as well um and we'll bring that format back if and when it makes sense in the future yeah uh, agreed you know it's like i mentioned when this was first asked for it's a real hard thing to pull off just because it's very rare to get more than one 
copy of a review game. But if, in the event that we can, we'll try to. You know, it's also hard to just... There's only three of us, so <laughs> tying two of us right. up on one project can be a little difficult. But in this case, it exactly. really worked out, uh, especially since it is kind of, you know, it's it, well, not kind of. It's two separate games that happen to be uh, connected. So, it you know, it made a lot of sense to do it this way. And it, I, I really enjoyed the more conversational format that that preview took. Uh, but. We could talk, you know, we could we could rehash our preview or we could talk about the news. Uh, so I think that our guest is missing in action. I think they're back. I, can, oh, can you hear me? Oh, we can yeah, hear them. We, can. We, we have a voice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Sorry, guys. Connection is uh, body. Uh, no, ho- no worries. I get it. You're coming all the way from China. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it is to be no expected. worries. We're just glad all you're right, back. Good, all right. Thanks. No worries. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to get our first story on screen uh, real quick here. This is one that I'm sure Ash will be more than happy to discuss. Oh, yeah. It comes to us from Tales Channel. In case you missed it, uh, there's a brand new uh, Sonic 30th anniversary promotional image that was re- uh, unveiled in a recent licensing report. Um, so it's a render. You know, you can see it on screen right now. It's Sonic passing through a ring and you can see a lot of 16-bit sonic imagery kind of behind him uh there has to be something to this i mean sega hopefully is gearing up to celebrate his anniversary in an actual meaningful way uh and and meaningful does not uh, include the sonic the card game it may end up being fun i'm not trying to talk crap on the card game <laughs> sure it might be great but where's where are the games man it has been so long since we've heard anything about a big new sonic game whether that's as the sequel to Mania, whether that's the next 3D game, uh, you know, the long-rumored Adventure 3, who knows what it is. But where are the Sonic games, man? Where are they? That's what I want. Right there behind them. And it's an interesting (laughs) selection of what they they have in that ring. Because I see, uh, obviously, Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic Mania is in there. I see Studiopolis, Sonic Adventure Mm -hmm. 1 and 2. Uh, Some of those multiples, like you have both Green Hill and... um, uh, second stage. It's not Mystic Ruins. It's something else. The second stage of Sonic yeah. One, but um, oh, Marble. Oh, it's Marble Zone. Marble. Marble. Zone, Marble. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Marble um, Gardens in Sonic Three. Yeah, but yeah, I have all those. Some of the special stages. Um, interesting to have those. There's another one in the top right behind his top sp- spine. Uh, that has a loop behind him, and he's sort of like posing, and I think he's in his cross pose. It might be Generations. I can't quite tell. But it's hard to say. It could be Sonic Heroes, maybe. Yeah. Because I think Generations is down below. So, uh, you can see Generations, I think, to the top right of his right shoe. I think that's the classic Sonic Green Hill Zone. Yes, from I Generations, believe you're right. I believe. Yeah. And, you know, all the images around him have a little extras. Like, they have his stuff from uh, either t- Team Sonic or Sega and Sonic All-Stars. Uh, so they are highlighting kind of, well, the highlights of Sonic career, Sonic's career. <laughs> We're not seeing the Hedgehog or the Werehog, or I should say, and things like that. These are, like, the best games. So, yeah, I don't know. Something? I don't know. I'm, I feel like with the delayed announcements from last year and i mentioned this on our on our first take uh, that we're coming up on a year since they announced that we would get a sonic announcement every month for the remainder of the year and so they had to have a lot of stuff planned and ready to go and i feel like some of those are definitely things that we're seeing now like ash mentioned the unexciting announcement of the card game i bet that was one of them <laughs> i feel like it had to be <laughs> yeah. um But there had to be. I feel like you don't make an announcement of something like that without having a game ready to go or, or, well, ready to announce, ready to go and ready to announce are are hugely different. And I feel like there was almost certainly a game uh, in the in the offing as part of Sega's six months of announcements that they had planned. I'm ready. for Yeah, I I I need a new. I have a feeling. (laughs) I have a feeling the pandemic just wreaked absolute havoc on Sega's anniversary plan for Sonic. And that's kind of what we're seeing play out now. Just, I mean, it just because it it feels like, I feel like without the pandemic, we would have gotten some sort of announcement by now. It just, in fact, I think we were supposed to, I think it's South by Southwest last year. They were going to have a Sonic panel talking about the future of of, of the franchise. Yeah, we were real quick though. Black Ninja in the chat mentions that image was from Sonic's 30th anniversary encyclopedia render or 30th, encyclopedia render so i wonder oh. if 
I wonder if it's not actually for the, well, I guess it is for the 30th anniversary, but apparently it's uh, for, for an art book. Come on. A, <laughs> Sega, damn it. It's pretty fun. Right. Okay. How do you feel about Sonic, Dr. Lava? Uh, you know, I grew up with Sonic. I, uh, I mentioned on yesterday's aborted show that I've been a Nintendo kid since, uh, you know, way back. But I did have a Sega Genesis. I had Sonic 1, 2, and 3. And uh, I, I think Sonic's great. I got the Switch collection on my... Um, uh, I got the collection on my Switch. Mm -hmm. um, I would like maybe like a Sonic 06 sequel. I think uh, I everyone can agree with me that that would be fantastic, but uh, I'm not oh. holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone agree with you about that? I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, sure uh, I mean, it's it's arguable that they, you know, maybe it's a good idea to remake a bad game and try to make it good. So, well, I know one person will agree with you, and that's Skull Kid Tiger in our chat, who says, "How do we all feel about Sonic in an awesome trailer? Fire everywhere, running around at the speed of sound, running through robots." And then we see Elise and Silver, Sonic 06 remastered. Oh. I feel like they cut Elise. <laughs> can you cut, can I mean, you have Sonic 06 without Elise though? Can I mean, you, is that... I think what they would do is probably change her character. <laughs> uh -huh. Like that, like and... maybe not be human and. <laughs> that would be probably. Try, a try to movie. change it up or at least change the design to be a little bit more fitting with the, the you know, Sonic's design. Like Sonic. maybe but again, more the mildly less animation of edition. Unleashed. <laughs> I don't know if you can have Sonic 06 without human hedgehog love, man. I, I just don't know if that can, I don't know if that can exist. It, I don't know. I agree. It is to this day, <laughs> Imran Khan's discord icon. So just to, just to point out, he has been it. using that. So you can't get rid of it. I mean, that yes. was really the only reason to play Sonic 06, if I'm being honest. So if yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I have somehow made it through my whole life without ever truly playing that game. Oh, I feel like I, Steve, owe it to myself. I want to see you stream it, man. I want to see your li live reactions to how bad and broken it is. I might I might have to do that. I would be willing to do it. I feel like that would be a a, f a fun time for everyone but me. <laughs> I'll pick uh, one for the team. Maybe I, I, I picked yeah. up the uh, PS3 version. I beat Sonic Story. I got about halfway through Silver Story and then I other stuff came up. And I was like, you know what? It's it's perfect for that. Um <sighs> Derek's like, you it's, know what? I got a funeral to go to. I, I'm gonna yeah. put Sonic down. Uh -huh. and do something. My sense more of fun. fun is dead, so I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go, to, go to that. Um, no, it, it's it's like the room. I think it's perfect to riff on. It's one of those things you join up with some buddies, watch each other's pain, and just pass the controller. That, that might be a yeah. really fun uh, stream, like just to kind of have because it's on P or no, Sonic 06 isn't on PC, is it? No. Otherwise, they'd be uh, remaking the heck out of that. They're we're still trying to, but mm. yeah, I was gonna say I could play it on PC and like you know have a few beers, be on camera, just drink drink the pain away of playing this <laughs> game. I, I might still do that, but I'd have to. Yeah, if Sonic's not gonna celebrate the thirtieth. You should, Steve. That's right. Right. <laughs> and to be fair, it does have you know some legitimately redeeming qualities. The soundtrack, as always with Sonic, is great. Uh, you also get to see Shadow kick Silver across the head, and that's always great because Silver sucks. Um, and, you know, seeing Shadow just kick the shit out of him, is it never gets old. So there are redeeming qualities there. Nice. Well, at, someday I'll try it. I have to yeah. find a copy. Probably $900 or something now. <laughs> as, as <laughs> at Derek the very least, I have a PS3 edition, so there you go. Nice. I'll, right. just, I'll just borrow Derek's copy. He'll be like, please never return it. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would be very happy if you didn't give it back. Anyway, uh I I don't have a segue for this. Let's talk about dying a little. I right. mean, we did just talk about Sonic 06, so you do have a segue. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. We we have faced our own mortality as it were, and uh that's rather fitting because Mortal Kombat 2 or Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat saw a 22.5 million dollar opening at the US box office, which I didn't even know that theaters were a thing right now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> apparently it had a pretty great opening weekend. I have a lot of thoughts about the Mortal Kombat movie. I watched it. Me I too. Have not, I have not watched it yet. I need to because I just haven't had a chance to pop, have it pop in. <laughs> we, we promised weekly discussions seen. and I promise there will be a discussion about this movie and holy shit, I think it'll be spirited. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, we, I, I, we have to discuss this movie. Yeah, <laughs> have, have you seen it yet, Doctor Lava? I have not seen. It. I haven't been in a theater in a couple of years, and 
I think I will be lost lore. Is it is it is it heavy on the lore, Steve? It is so it goes into the lore, but it does so in a very approachable way. Uh my they wife assume that it. I don't that I don't know the difference between Sub Zero and uh Yes, they totally else. assume you don't know the difference. The movie actually yeah. opens with an introduction to Sub Zero and Scorpion specifically. But Was it good? Oh, man, so, <laughs> I I, I want to save as much as I can for for the eventual discussion, but I will say I do not like this movie. I ju- I don't like it. Okay, it pissed I, me. I've off. seen opinions <laughs> kind of all over the place. Some people dig it, some people don't. Some people are like, yeah, it's mm. fine. Some people are like, no, this is garbage. My my I think... wife and I one hundred percent disagree on this film. She loves it. Really? really? Interesting. Yeah, she she I I. Honestly, I thought it was so bad that I assumed she was just joking. Because she's like, yeah, I'll watch it again. Wow. I liked it a lot. I would watch it again. And I'm like, what? You would? Anyway. <laughs> like, I was so, I was like, quit, quit fucking with me and tell me the truth. Like, tell me your real opinion. And <laughs> like, that is my real opinion. I actually like it. And I was like, all right, cool. Okay. My, my wife and I watched it last night. Uh, she's a big Mortal Kombat fan. And we both agree that the story is a mess, but the movie's fun to watch. Like, the, the, the fight scenes are great. You got some great fatalities in there. It's very gory, but as a as a you know, movie tar- trying to tell a story, it's a bit of a mess. So I wouldn't say it's like an amazing movie, but I enjoyed it for its cheese and for its moral combatness. For for all those reasons about the goriness and the fatalities, like yep, not watching this with Amy. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, man. yeah, yeah. Amy my, will hate it. Yeah. My wife, I I will say this. My wife absolutely despises gore and blood. Like she wants to like vomit when she sees stuff, but. Mortal Kombat was so over. There was only one moment in that movie where she was like, "Nope, can't see that. Not looking at it." There was mm-hmm. there was a moment, and I know Ash is going to know the one. The probably the second goriest moment, uh, the one involving Kung Lao. Oh yeah, uh-huh. my my wife <laughs> right thought that, that was comically funny. Like she uh-huh. it was so she good. she did not like the other serious contender for goriest moment in the movie at all like she had to look away but with the kung lao part Wait, she she just started busting up laughing because of how it, ridiculous it was ha- having, so not watch, having not watched it i can think of two kung lao fatalities both in, involve uh chopping a man in half and i'm curious like which it has to be a fatality if it's if it's gory and like which one did they go with? oh man it's it's you gotta watch funny. it man it's yeah the, the way they shot it it's really funny but uh one thing one thing i will say is that i do feel because it i'm uh seeing some folks in the chat talking about Kano in the movie. Kano was great. He Kano was great, <laughs> right? Yeah. Kano yeah. was, I, I want a Kano only movie. Like just Same. because <laughs> his, he is so well written and the actor performed him to a T. There's, there's this one part where someone, someone puts their hand on Kano, like, and mentions, mentions <laughs> training. Yeah. And, and just, he naturally like, goes like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. As soon as the guy, there's also, him, <laughs> There's also a great, a great part where uh, a, a certain character has something disappointing happen to them, and he mimics a sad trombone from the background. He's like, yeah. rawr, rawr. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. he's such an asshole, and it's great. He's so obnoxious, and he's played perfectly. Yeah. And I, I do love that that uh, that the actor playing Kano in this movie, you know, he's kind of continuing the legacy established by the original Kano. In the, in the original Mortal Kombat movie, who has now passed away, but he was the one to establish the character as, like, this brash Australian, like, just that 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 cocky mm. personality he has. He established that, and this new actor took up the mantle and totally ran with it, and I love that. Yeah, I would say Kano, Kano was one of the best characters in the movie for me. Unfortunately, and, and we could probably go all day with this, but... Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll save it. For, I, I have for questions. I'm like, I'm going to say this because this is definitely a discussion at some point. You gotta yeah, watch it, yeah. Man. You gotta watch it. Stay tuned. We'll I'll have a Mortal Kombat skip. discussion. I tend to skip those kind of Oscar Beatty sort of movies. <laughs> Oscar Beatty. <laughs> oh yeah, total Oscar Beatty. I mean, yeah, yeah. Def- definitely going to be up for an Academy hey, Award for. Sonic got snubbed at the Academy Awards. That's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Sonic could have been a contender for Best Animated Film if it qualifies, I, or. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, visual I don't effects, maybe. I thought Sonic maybe. had really good visual effects. Anyway, we could we could probably hop off topic with Sonic for for quite some time as well. <laughs> ah, man, from from one story about fun stabby stuff to a story about real sad stabby stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's get this next one on screen. 
Uh, this comes to us by way of Daniel Ahmad. So in a, an individual was arrested on April 24th for attempting to assassinate the founders of MiHoYo with a knife. Uh, those For those of you that don't know, MiHoYo is the company that created Genshin Impact, uh, the game that is well known as a like anime waifu Breath of the Wild. Uh, <laughs> right. Th- basically, thankfully, you know, no one was hurt. Uh, but apparently, the, it, actually, this is probably more relevant to our guests than to any one of us. A recent update to the yeah. some character skins since Honkai Impact 3rd's global server prompted backlash from some users in China. They cited two reasons. Uh, one, it was disrespectful to the character and to the country of China. And two, it was only in the global server playing into point one. So apparently there is some kind of outfit that is that has been deemed offensive by the player community it specifically within china um that's actually surprising to hear because chinese people are not as uh things like i don't know cultural appropriation or even kind of cultural sensitivity in general is not nearly as big a thing in china as it is in you know america for instance i'm surprised to hear that the cause of this uh, situation would be something of that sort well, I, I looked into this a little bit, and as I understand it, it, it might have something to do with exclusive, like, you know, like bunny girl costumes for some of the characters. And it, it's it's being or it was being looked at as kind of like, well, in a waifu type way, right? Like, oh, my these are my waifus. So, you know, the rest of the world, if, if China can't have these costumes, my waifu shouldn't be able to be seen by people outside of China in these costumes. Okay. And that I'm going to go kill mihoyo for that <laughs> it's like China, chinese people do not like region exclusive uh cosmetics that don't come to china so mm-hmm. while they aren't too politically correct they get very angry about region exclusive material um particularly waifu based and it makes total sense someone would try to assassinate the director over that <laughs> wow. i love how you say that so it makes total sense like i know obviously what you mean but it's just like oh yeah that that's just that happened it makes sense i'd be that pissed over that no it makes but, total sense absolutely yeah. no i'm kidding I, no it doesn't <laughs> right. make any sense yeah i mean look i have i don't care about genshin impact at all but good no, I mean, god when you start trying to assassinate people over waifu costumes or assassinate people over video games or anything like come on man <laughs> Jesus. The, the thing is, I've seen the, you know, some of the character designs from Genshin Impact and they never they're not as I don't even think they're as bad as some of the costumes from Fire Emblem Heroes. Like they are this Nothing is worth like killing over. Right. Well, I, did, I think Honkai <laughs> Impact is a different game entirely, but it, just as far as Genshin Impact, like this, this it feels like a like some of the most chaste waifus you'll ever see when it has that type of um stuff involved. Uh chaste waifu. and yeah, and I actually see them talking about like the guys being more sought after than the girls, just because it's like, oh, this is more about the you know, uh, what is it, husbandos? I guess I think it is. Uh-huh. Husbando. Well, it's a new I one like, on me. I like yeah. that phrase. I'm never going to use it outside of this show. Oh, it is. I did sit around for a while. Oh so yeah, I, no, I was I, mistaken. the The nature of the content I, I was correct about, but it is for their other game, Honkai Impact. Not yes, Genshin. it is Honkai. Yeah, yeah, Honkai Impact. Right. Right. Yeah, I've heard of Honkai Impact or Honkai Impact. I don't know how you say it, but I've I've heard of it and I've I've they they're great at creating strike visually striking games that I don't like playing. So <laughs> I don't know. I, it doesn't do a lot for me. I anticipate that I'll probably I, I tried Genshin Impact on the PS4 when it came out and I was like, yeah, I hate this. I this I is... I saw Amy play a little bit and she enjoyed it, but then she got hooked on Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> so oh, that was that. In my opinion, um, that's a much better choice. One and, of my uh... studio says in the chat, uh, Genshin is a game where some male character banners banners have made more money than the women, which that's unheard of. I'm sorry. It really is. Like PSO <laughs> yeah, that's, two, wow. it, it male outfits are super cheap, whereas female mm-hmm. outfits are ridiculously expensive. So uh please keep Please stay horny, nerds. You know, like I, I like playing men in my we, game, so keep the male stuff cheap. One of my uh, one of my best friends plays Genshin Impact just casually, and he enjoys it for what it is. And he he often trolls me by calling Breath of the Wild shitty Genshin Impact. Wow, <laughs> that is that yeah. is something I he doesn't done mean in my it. teenage years. Like I yeah, he doesn't mean it. That. He just likes to troll me. But uh, but yeah, he, he enjoys it for what it is. But he yeah, he's like it's nothing special, really. Nice. 
Yeah. Eh, it's eh, all right. Well, we've got. We, I don't know that this is going to be a waifu focused game, but let's let's move on to our next story, which at least includes a picture of an absolute unit of a waifu. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Tales offers at least one of those. <laughs> yeah. So Tales of Arise uh, apparently has decided to drop multiplayer for a bigger focus on characters and story. It's it's not like they announced that there was going to be multiplayer for this, but this comes from Push Square, and they've mentioned that, uh, you know, while most games in the Tales series include some form of multiplayer, that uh, Tales of Arise will not. They wanted instead to uh, focus on things that are more, I want to say, endemic to traditional JRPGs, you know, characters, story. They mentioned that it will be a linear game, not an open world type of uh this is, so basically a traditional JRPG, really, when you think about it. Really, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually not... love this. Like, yeah. I, I love that that we have a developer trumpeting the fact that their game is single player and linear. Like, so I don't know if it's many times. It's more like getting ahead of like any backlash. Well, but I mean, like, yeah, that's true, I guess. But I mean, just saying, like, confidently saying, "Hey, our game, we we did explore using an open world format, but it's going to be fairly linear." That's a good thing. Not every game needs to be open world. And it's so rare to see a developer so confidently come out and say, hey, yeah, our game's linear. And I actually find that really refreshing. And this, you know, I, I've played a couple of Tales of games. I've liked them. But this just makes me want to play it more, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like uh, a lot of games try to do whatever is in vogue currently, you know, including whatever the genre du jour is and taking elements from that and cramming it into other games where it doesn't necessarily fit. And I feel mm -hmm. like I, I like traditional linear, you know, story driven games. I still love those. Same. That's what I grew up with. And I, I love the fact that there are developers out there still willing to make games in a, in a kind of more classical way. Uh, it gets me this gets me more interested in tales of arise than if they had come out and said yeah it's open world and totally. branching paths and you can do so much shit you can get a car if you want like i i get that <laughs> a lot of people want a lot of choice these days but sometimes you know that that leads me to feel that because they are focusing on making it a linear plot driven game that it'll be that much better for it uh you know it doesn't it doesn't read like a negative to me at all Right. Yeah. I completely and agree. And having watched the gameplay now of Tales of Arise, it I don't think it would work in multiplayer unless it's online multiplayer, which I don't even think that would be as, as enjoyable because the whole fun of, you know, multiplayer in Tales is usually a side view. If you, you know, you look on the side and it's two, sort of 2D action that you enjoy. And that makes it a lot easier to have multiple people control each character and do their own thing and not lose track of everybody. But this is much more... 3d action uh in, in in arises case and with the changing perspectives like that there's no way to make that camera that kind of camera work um that said the mm -hmm. combat does look fantastic but again dr lava have you i know you st tend to st stick to switch to nintendo but there has been I tales do. games on nintendo uh i played tales of symphonia a little bit but to be honest i'm completely ignorant to the series which is why i've staying silent in the corner over here. <laughs> you're a man after my own heart here dr lava i i have played tales of symphony as well but that's about it i i wish vash was here right now to talk me through i this. know <laughs> yeah i i uh i enjoy i i played uh, two tales games i tried to play a third i kind of burned out on it it was a tales of the abyss for uh 3ds the 3ds version and i know people say that's a slow bur slow burn and worth the wait for it to get really going but i just I couldn't couldn't quite get to that point, but I really enjoyed Symphonia and Vesperia. And uh, yeah, I'm, it's been a long time since I played a Tales of game. And this is more and more looking to be maybe one that I'd like to get back into the series with. Of course, assuming I have time. <laughs> but, you yeah. know, that's always the thing. Which but one it does come out on my, early. You're right. But it does come out on my birthday, at least officially come out on my birthday. So that's cool. And that kind of nice. just makes me want to pay more attention more. to it as well. Um, yeah. Real quick, I want to call out some comments from the chat. Aaron Rules uh, mentions, Tales have had local multiplayer options for almost every game. I feel like it sucks for people who have enjoyed experiencing it that way. I, I agree with that. Um, 
but uh, kind of in a in a weird, not an actual reply, but Evernight brings up a good point as well that, you know, I appreciate that they tell us exactly what we're in for. And that's kind of how I feel about this is, mm-hmm. you know, I, I get that if if you've largely interacted with this series uh, in local co-op or multiplayer in some respect, then it could be a major letdown. But at least they're announcing that ahead of time saying, hey, you know, this game's different. It's going to be linear, single player more a more focused kind of uh kind of game from us and at least that way if that is something you're used to at least you can make an informed decision on whether you want to pick it up or not because it would be a huge bummer if they right. like announce that the 11th hour after you've pre-ordered it and you're about to go pick it up uh you know oh mm-hmm. hey by the way that feature you really like we axed it so <laughs> thanks for your 60 dollars <laughs> uh-huh. bye um yeah yeah so so good on them for at least getting out ahead of it as Derek kind of alluded to earlier and I don't know. At least for me personally, it sounds it, it sounds like uh, th- I agree with you, Ash. This is a game I might want to get into. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, from news that kind of, you know, interests some of us to news that interests exactly one of us. Uh, let me get this <laughs> next story on screen here. And that is that May Day is coming back. And you know what May Day means, folks? May Day means Rover is coming back to Animal Crossing. It is my one day a year that I get to see my favorite cat, the best one in the world. And I own a real life cat. Rover is still my favorite cat. <laughs> wow. Anyway, uh, that's that's not all, though. So in addition to Mayday, Nintendo actually kind of laid out a longer roadmap than they normally do. And I guess that makes sense because some of these are repeats from last year. Uh, so we have May Day, which essentially goes from April 29th to May 7th. That's when you can see a rover. You can go to the special island. Um, you have International Museum Day from May 18th to May 31st. Uh, you get a little stamp card with this one, and you go look at various pieces of art around the island, and you get uh, you get items for doing that. There's wedding season, which I, I skipped last year, so I'll be interested to see this. And there's actually a really uh, great reason that I want to be involved with wedding season this year that I'll talk about in just a second. And then you've got like your traditional seasonal items. Uh, so a bunch of stuff is going on and a lot of new things are coming to Animal Crossing even, you know, two years on, which sounds really weird to say out loud. Um, right. But, well, a, a year and some year change. and a half-ish. Yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting to me that Nintendo is still continuing to support Animal Crossing in this way. But the big thing I want to mention, and we're going to have a video on this on the channel, hopefully in the next three days, is uh, Animal Crossing includes support for the Pokemon Snap printer. So oh, wow. when, you take, when you take pictures on wedding day, you can go take wedding pictures and you can print them out using the same app that Nintendo is making available for Pokemon Snap. Uh, they even mm. include like Animal Crossing themed borders for the pictures, so they know that people are going to kind of come and, and print other games photos in this thing. It, it, the primary use is Pokemon Snap, but they've made it available for several other games. Um, I'm trying to get my hands on the printer right now as soon as I can, and the app is available. And the reason I say three days is the app itself isn't released yet. I have all the other stuff, <laughs> at least, or at least I know where to get it. Uh, so as soon as we can, we'll be doing a video on. How to print your Pokemon Snap pictures in real life, uh, just like nice. we were able to at Blockbusters in the 90s. Um, so I'll have a full tutorial on that, and maybe maybe I'll throw in some Animal Crossing wedding pictures. Who knows? Um, but <laughs> I mean, you have to wait a little bit for, for that. Well, that's true. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, as you guys know, I don't. You know, I'm kind of beyond Animal Crossing now. I, I've kind of. I just don't really play it anymore. I didn't really get into New Horizons. However, I do love this update specifically because I have said before that Reese is my favorite. Animal Crossing villager. I think she and Cyrus are adorable. And I'm looking at the, you know, their wedding pictures here on the on the update page now. And they're just so damn cute. And I love it. I think they're cute. They're awesome. And I, you know, if I did play Animal Crossing, I would absolutely, you know, be getting in there for this update specifically. But I don't. And that's okay. I can I can admire their cuteness from afar. Yep, I don't play Animal Crossing, but according to Humble Jobo, Jojo, they they believe that they think that they didn't have anything re- big ready to go, so they're just recycling content for now. Which, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I don't think that there's anything huge that they have uh, ready or set up. I think Animal Crossing success took Nintendo by surprise, and I think that mm-hmm. uh, I think what we'll see. Year. Yeah, it's been it's been a year. I feel like they've got time to realize, like, oh, we sold like twenty five million copies. Like, 
my wife hates video games. She thinks they're dumb. And, <laughs> oh, uh, man. Ouch. Yeah, she only likes Super Mario Brothers on NES. That's literally the only game she oh, likes. Oh, wow. But All she right. did get really into Animal Crossing, which is, uh, yeah, the only game in, you know, since 1985 that she actually enjoyed. <laughs> um, we both played it together, which is a first. And um, yeah, it was a fantastic game. Um, I am kind of surprised that Nintendo didn't, uh, you know, when they realized how big it had gotten, that they didn't take advantage of that with more, you know, updates. Um, kind of a disappointing, but... Um, I, I wonder yeah. if the pandemic sort of, like, we, we've talked about how the pandemic seems to have caught Nintendo off guard, especially. So that might be a reason why. Yeah, my, my thought is that they expected Animal Crossing to do okay, but not top three games on on the platform good. And so I think that they did a good job building out a year's worth of content. And then mm-hmm. they realized like, holy shit, there's tens of millions of people playing this now. We should probably prioritize updates for this. But like you said, they, you know, Nintendo has probably been in disarray for a year now. Um, mm-hmm. I would yeah. fully expect because there are still... Uh, data miners when the game first came out found evidence of bunches of things that were not in the game and by and large those have slowly come to fruition the but we're still missing things for instance there was a whole cooking subsystem to make food that existed in the game you were supposed to be able to grow vegetables you were supposed to brewster was supposed to have his shop those are all things that have been data mined out of the game a long time ago Mm-hmm. and mm. they're still not there. So I'm wondering, you know, Nintendo probably is going to release those at some times because alongside those were all the things we've seen come to the game, like swimming and, you know, uh, Red's ship and stuff like that. And everyone's like, oh, there's going to be art. And everyone's like, yeah, that's a, that's like a pie in the sky wish list of shit that you got there. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, no one, no one believes you. And then slowly but surely things started to come out. And then the updates kind of dried up and stopped, right? And I imagine, I imagine uh, that Nintendo has probably pulled members of that team onto projects that they deem to be more important for the time uh, to keep new games coming out. Uh, but I imagine yeah. as soon as we, I, I would bet by the end of this year, Animal Crossing gets at least one more substantial update, something that Thank adds you. a new mechanic or a new system. They whatever it adds. Uh, oh, go, oh, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I'd heard a rumor that the Animal Crossing team wasn't making any more updates because they're working on the next F Zero, which I hope <laughs> is true. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, oh, boy. You're, you're you playing know. with people's hearts, Doctor. Yeah. I know. Which I guess is appropriate. <laughs> All I know is rumor. whatever else comes to this game, it is a crime that Brewster and his coffee shop or his cafe are not in it yet at, at present. And this game, by the end of its lifespan, needs to add Brewster back in because he's Brewster. And. Come on, he's. I, I, that was my favorite part. He was my like. I mean, Reese is my favorite villager, but like, just you know, the whole coffee shop experience was my favorite part of my time with New Leaf on 3DS. And he's so cool. I they got to bring him back. They got to. I I agree with that. I think that they need to bring him back. They need to make uh, like Tom Nook's shop and and the uh, Able Sisters just open twenty four seven, just because yeah. mm-hmm. I think that. You know, the audience that plays this, there's a ton more adults that have nine to fives and other responsibilities Mm -hmm. and can only log into Animal Crossing after dark. And then, you know, it's it it is a huge bummer to log into the game and find that everything's closed anyway. So you can't do anything. (laughs) So I I Mm -hmm. hope that at some point they address that, give us the ability to maybe expand the nook shop to to be even bigger and have you know 24 hour support or something but i i agree that brewster is probably the number one thing i want back that hasn't yet <laughs> returned and he was everdyne studios if i remember everdyne studios says they're supposed to be gyroids i because i haven't played new horizons other than like a really short preview i didn't realize gyroids aren't in new horizons nope. that's such a big part of animal not, crossing not that's when all. the villagers moves in smash like what how are there not gyroids <laughs> in this game yeah. what it is mm, it is so incredibly wild. Weird. I in yeah. every Animal Crossing game except for New Horizons, I had like a gyroid room <laughs> that just had all right. the weirdest ones I could find. And there's there's literally only one gyroid and it's not a furniture gyroid. It's just Lloyd the gyroid and he builds your bridges. Mm. Don't are know where the hell the rest of his homies are. Are you familiar with the real life uh, lore behind gyroids? 
I have I I used to uh, I know that I've read uh, up on it before, but I'll be honest, I've completely forgotten. I was just talking about it yesterday, so it's kind of top of mind. Um, mm-hmm. There, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this because I'm from Arkansas, so I mispronounce everything that's not <laughs> English. But um, uh, the, in Japanese, they're called haniwa. Probably wrong, but uh, they're called haniwa, which are like uh, these clay figures that are used in funeral rituals and buried with the dead. And so it's kind of implied that when you dig one up out of the ground in Animal Crossing, that you're digging one up out of a grave, essentially. Oh, yeah. Honey-wa. Oh, I've seen oh, wow. these. Honeywa. Yeah. I've right, seen these. Right. These Which, are uh, all over Okami as well. You see these a lot in Okami. Well, well if uh, yeah, you think you're a fan, I guess that explains why you always were kind of cre- creeped out by them. <laughs> right. You know, the one thing I want to point out, though, and it makes significant changes to animal crossings lore in a weird way is that lloyd the gyroid is alive and can talk so what's the deal with the ones you keep trapped in your house right (laughs) you're Uh, like hey lloyd can you build me another bridge by the way your cousin is in my basement (laughs) yeah i have no mouth and must scream (laughs) oh god yeah all he does is make weird fart sounds and dance so i think it's fine (laughs) <laughs> that's him struggling to get out yeah he's like Daniel I mean he says every farts. animal cro- <laughs> 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 Eli, I mean, he says every animal crossing village is built on top of an old Japanese cemetery that tracks with the gyroids that's true yeah it is <laughs> good way of looking yeah. at it all right all right so uh so we could I could probably go on a wild bender about animal crossing and gyroids and apparently farts but <laughs> Let's let's move from from a story that has me super hyped to a story that has Derek super hyped. So I'm going to throw that next one on screen. And I know that y'all probably already heard about this thanks to the delay, but we're going to talk about it anyway. And that is Got to. that Riven oh, yeah. has been revealed for Ratchet and Clank, the upcoming PlayStation 5 game Rift Apart Ratchet and Clank. Uh it comes out June what 11th. Day, 11th. I knew he'd know right off the top of his head. But <laughs> more importantly, we're getting a state of play on Thursday, I believe, uh, with yeah. 15 minutes of gameplay. So a lot of info coming about Rift Apart real soon. And I'm going to throw it right to you, Derek. You got to be over the moon about this, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why I did the whole update on Rift Apart. And people in the people in the comments actually did correct me or something because I was wondering about, hmm, I kind of want to wonder what kind of in-game... Um, purchases are there because it was part of the uh, rating thing and if they confirmed that insomniac later said that that is basically if you don't get the uh digital deluxe that comes with the five new uh skins you can buy those later that's all that is that's Which all is that is. Awesome. okay cool so no no nothing like microtransactions or anything like that so that that's cool uh that was my hmm, <laughs> one little worry there um it all like I watched the gameplay. I've watched this trailer like three or four times already. It's just so wonderful. I love the idea behind it that we're going to have like basically two um, nefariouses running around. That's fun. Seeing, uh, you know, Rivet interact with uh, Clank and just the scale of some of these things going on. God, everything about this game it looks gorgeous and fun, and I cannot wait to play it. It looks so freaking amazing. Um, what consoles is that coming? PlayStation that Five only. Ah, okay. Yeah, man, I I hadn't had a chance to watch the trailer yet, and I'm, of course I'm watching it without sound right now. But I'm just I'm watching it, and I mean I don't need to tell you this, Derek. My God, this game looks incredible. Yep. It looks it, beautiful. It looks like, like a Pixar Jesus. movie, man. It, this, oh, yeah, man, this, I can't this, wait to play this. this this game is the reason I needed to find myself a PS five. I wanted to be ready for this. Right. And as Chad is mentioning, uh, you know, it had a Devo song on it in it, which is important because uh, a member of Devo is doing the soundtrack for this game. Oh, um, neat. the same one. I forget his name offhand, but the same one who did the, the uh, Mark mother's ball. It might be, uh, let me see if I can look it up and find out. Um, but basically it's the same one who's done music for, uh, ja- uh, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Jack and Daxter, as well as animated series like uh, Rugrats and Thor Ragnarok. And yes, Mark Mothersbaugh. Thank you. Uh, you were right, Dr. Lava. Mm, Mark Mothersbaugh for 200. Got that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on, the, on the blog post, they actually have some um, 
music samples, uh, three different songs that they have in here. Uh, only like 40 seconds each, but still, like, they are, they're definitely doing a blowout. I don't, it's been a while since I've seen Ratchet and Clank kind of get this much of a spotlight. So, yes, please. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And speaking of how the game's going to sound, uh, on top of all this, they also officially confirmed that Jennifer Hale is going to be voicing Rivet, which oh, nice. is awesome. Because Jennifer mm -hmm. Hale is one of the greatest voice actresses of all time, in my opinion. She, I'm lucky to call her a friend. She is just so incredibly talented. And uh, I'm, I'm just I love to see that she's going to be in this role. She is, of course, uh, Commander Shepard, female Commander Shepard from the Mass Effect series. And also the grunts um, of Samus and Metroid Prime. Yeah, the grunts of yeah of, of Metroid. Yeah, exactly. So she was she's great in uh, the original Metroid Prime. Her dialogue got cut. Yeah, uh, that's mostly what mm -hmm. I as a huge Metroid fan. That's the first thing that pops into my mind. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. She's also Naomi Hunter in Metal Gear Solid. I mean, she's she's so incredibly prolific, and oh, I, I I'm she sure she's Naomi going Hunter. to kill it as. Oh, oh yeah, I just it, just in those little bits of uh, from the trailer. Yeah, Rivet yeah. sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm I'm truly excited for this, and I don't really uh, mess with Ratchet and Clank too much. So I, I think this. Boy, does uh, Sony need to put the the prime, uh, not prime, but the future games on in a, like a nice little trilogy on the PS5? That'd hey, I'll I, I'll just be glad to take what we're getting. This Sony has been doing an amazing job of producing games that really illustrate the difference in technology between the PS4 and the PS5. Returnal. Is excellent too. It's a great showcase for the controller. I'm really excited to see what Rift Apart does with the Dual Sense because me too. They have been oh, it's gonna feel it. great. Yeah, I have I I have high hopes for that. But so far, I mean, same. I would say that Rift Apart is the probably the best looking game I I think I've ever seen to this point, which is saying a lot because I think it the PS5 really, has some yeah. really impressive games, but Ratchet and Clank looks. Uh, like I said, it looks like you're watching an animated film in the trailers. Yeah, and I, I agree with you, Steve. I feel like it's going to do some amazing things with the dual sense, the, the, the haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers. I feel like both that and Horizon 2 are going to really just do some amazing things with that uh, controller. Uh, Derek, there is a uh, question I think you are uniquely suited to answer in the chat. Uh, Romsky113 asks, can they play this game without playing the older games? That's a good uh, question. Yeah, Ratchet and Clank is, is usually pretty good about just being able to jump in. You, you, you kind of have your basics. You really don't need to know, from, from what I've seen in the trailers, anything going on. Uh, all you need to know at, at, at this point is, like, Nefarious is just a longtime bad guy who shows up on occasion. Not every game, but just on occasion. He's the mo definitely the most reoccurring um, villain that they've uh, faced. And uh, the thing that's causing all this is a thing called Dimensionator, which uh, is a key item of both uh, Kraken Time and uh, Tools of Destruction, where basically ties into the fact that uh, Ratchet's a Lombax and him having a chance of actually finding his family, the rest of the Lombaxes, because he's the only one in the universe. They all got locked away in another dimension a long time ago. So they kind of, starting with the future series, they started playing into that a lot more to get a li little bit more uh, heart <laughs> out of the series because before it was just like fun action mm -hmm. romps. Right. Yes. And, and it seems like that might lean super heavily into that part of the story, right? Given that this is the whole concept of this game is about alternate dimensions, I, I would think. I mean, you would think so. I mean, they've, they've tied into Lombaxes before because, they, you know, they... Yeah, you know, uh, in Crack in Time, Ratchet meets a kind of a mentor Lombax that knew his father and ties into that whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it's just a there's a lot of things they can do with this. And uh, I am I'm so so down. They, they always find a great way of tying humor and just yeah. really solid stories at this point. Um, it's probably worth pointing out. Thanks for the reminder, Adoodle, uh, saying, so what are those upcoming indie titles? Yeah, so State of Play mm -hmm. on, on Thursday. It is it, The main thing is it's going to give us an extended look at Rift Apart gameplay, but Sony has also promised updates on a pair of upcoming indie games, and who knows what they are. But I'm, mm -hmm. you know, as a, yeah. we're all big indie game fans here, so I'm sure we're all excited to find out, you know, what we're looking Absolutely. at. Absolutely. Um, all right, so before, uh, yeah, State of Play on Thursday, be there. We'll with be us. reacting we'll, to we'll it. We'll be live. You'll yes. see, uh, like, definitely. Hyped. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover a few smaller stories here in, in rapid succession because we have like 13 in the news doc still. <laughs> so um, real quick, uh, Capcom announced updated timing for their Resident Evil 8 demo, that 60-minute demo. 
Uh, I'm going to give you those time frames rather than throw them on screen here because I only have so many slots in OBS. Uh, the extended <laughs> final demo times are for North America, you can access the Resident Evil demo from May 1st at 5 p.m. until May 9th at 5 p.m. In the UK, that is May 2nd at 1 a.m. until May 10th at 1 a.m. Cool. <laughs> and uh, in the rest of Europe, that is May 2nd at 2 a.m. till May 10th at 2 a.m. Why Capcom had to make this so complicated is beyond me. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. It is crazy how difficult it is to play this demo. You have to just be there for that eight hour window. But it, it, hey, finally, they realized, hmm, maybe we should give people more than 24 hours to play your demo. Granted, you what can only still play an hour behind Th such a short window. I hadn't, I hadn't heard it was so short. That's that's what I wonder yeah. is, I mean, I get the idea of a timed demo, and that's already annoying. Like, a timed demo that you only have X number of minutes to play, and then it just stops working, is in and of sure. itself pretty annoying. Um, you know, just code a hard endpoint into the demo that takes about that long to get to and let people run through it as many times as they want. It's a fucking demo. <laughs> you know? mm. <laughs> yeah. um, the whole point is to get people hyped for it. And I remember being a kid and having access to like PC demos because console demos until CDs came out weren't really a thing. And I would play the hell out of those things. And when that game came out, I would be bugging my dad. I'd be like, buy me this. Yo, buy me this. I played the demo <laughs> 300 times. Just please. You know? I want new content. Yeah. I had, I, my dad had yeah. a Tomb Raider demo for the PC. And it was, you know, just one vertical slice of the game. I probably played it like 200 times. I was like, please buy me this and I'll get off your computer forever. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it, it absolutely works. So I don't know what Capcom, you know, I'm sure that money changed hands and there was some kind of financial element to this I whole mean thing. they, they right. also might be trying to pull a Nintendo like oh it's only available for this amount of time you got to get it quick and play as, it now as yeah, someone who was short, interested short but window yeah that's mm. what I was going to say as someone yeah. who is interested in Resident Evil 8 but who also has a life I completely forgot what the timing was and missed both of the limited demos Oof. So, yeah, I'm in the same boat. I didn't forget when it was, but I just couldn't be home to play it when when it was available to me. And I just couldn't. I, and that sucks because I want to check it out. It's It was available so late, too, because yeah. it, it didn't pop, uh, pop up until 8 p.m. for me. Well, see, the problem. That's, right. So the problem is 8 p.m. for you is 5 p.m. for us. And for me, that means the first three hours of availability, I was, you know, having dinner with my family possibly editing an episode of this show getting my kids into bed like doing a lot of things and by the time that's all happened i'm exhausted i'm just like i i didn't even think to check i didn't even remember i was just like oh well yeah I, you know time to watch some tv a, and go to bed maybe it's a way to make you realize the value of resident evil 8 they're asking <laughs> you to choose between tucking yeah. in your children at night <laughs> yeah and the game and that sort of subconsciously <laughs> you know, sends the signal like this is maybe more important than your children. Just, so just you get a text from and play yeah, the game. It's, it's, sorry, kids. I got to go kill zombies. Yeah. Your, your phone just yeah. goes off. Fuck them kids. It's time to play Resident <laughs> Evil. Well, <laughs> when you put it that way, Capcom hot dog. Yeah. Right. Why, why, why tuck in your own kids when lady Dimitris can tuck your kids in instead, right? <laughs> there are some people that would definitely go for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> All right, all right. So um, I'm, I'm going to move through a couple more smaller news stories because uh, there's two big ones at the end that I want to talk about. One mm -hmm. one that is just really weird. Well, both are kind of weird. Anyway, uh, today <laughs> we got a third trailer for Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin uh, that was part of a digital event that was just too early in the morning for us to... Uh... I, I mean, between... I would have had yeah. to stream three times a day and I'm already like not wanting to put too much pressure on Amy. So yeah. going from that to th to my own stream to this, that'd be a bit much. Yeah. I, yeah, I forgot about the event, honestly. Um, and then I woke up around six this morning, but I had not slept hardly at all. I just had kind of a, kind of a rough night trying to sleep. And I, I saw that Ash had mentioned at like five in the morning, when he was still awake <laughs> because yeah. i was i yeah. was doing that mario party news story and yeah. the famicom detective club preview yeah and so i was like good lord ash go to bed and then he's like i'll yeah. be up at 6 30 i was like no you won't yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh i was like you know what it's probably okay to skip this one uh but monster hunter stories 2 continues to look cool brandon will be reviewing it for us i promise you it'll be a be an excellent review and it looks like a really good game i i wish i had time to play rpgs like that 
Um, secondly, as uh, as Ash kind of alluded to, well, we'll talk more about that, the Super Mario Party update in a bit, but a Meet- Metopia demo was released out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're interested at all in Metopia for the Switch, probably check out the demo. I think your progress carries over to the final game. Yes, it does. So, yes, I believe so. A cool way to get started. Uh, we'll probably play it at some point here on the channel, just play through the demo real quick. Um, yeah. I think that that would I kind of want to check it out because I, I never played it on 3DS and it's, I was always kind of like mildly curious about it. So it's cute, it. but I would recommend loading up your uh, Switch with some Mies because you'll need them. Right, right. True, true. Yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think I have a they're couple. They're in my... I think they're in my, I don't even know how they would be, but like my, my all my Miis show up in the Tamadashi life stage of Smash Ultimate. I don't know how they would have gotten into my Switch, but they're there somehow. So I think I'm good. Weird. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, have you played Metopia, Dr. Lava? No, uh, my wife got me a 3DS um, for Christmas, and then she gave birth to a baby later the same day. Oh, so I just, wow, yeah, you have kinda... a Christmas baby. I do, yeah. It was really poor timing on her part, but uh, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't complain. She did give me the well, 3DS, but I have not. I have never actually played it uh, due to the whole, uh, you know, baby situation. Yeah, I get oh, that. Right. We know how that goes. Uh, mm-hmm. You're talking. Yeah, but, you're uh, talking to a combined eight children <laughs> on this show. Um, yeah. Oh, for a second, I thought you were saying you had eight children. Sorry, no, yeah. combined. Oh God. Oh, right. man. <laughs> Although to be fair, uh, one of us has no children, so you. I was going to say it's combined, but. But it's really just to, to the two of you. I yeah, I, I can't uh, uh, profess to be part of that combination. We're we're really just trying but, to fill uh, out a little league team, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I might give Metopia a shot. I'm uh, yeah, I'm basically a Nintendo fanboy. I think I was telling y'all on the aborted show yesterday that y'all told me then, but at the time I didn't know what the new Xbox was even called. Um, so I tend to play all the big <laughs> Nintendo games. So I'll probably give Metopia a shot. Did, did y'all play it the first time around? I, I played the 3DS version uh, to a degree, and it's it's fun. It's cute. Um, but your mileage varies. Some people got really addicted to it. Others is like, all right, I got the gist of this for this amount of time. I'm done. It it's mm-hmm. kind of varies. Because it's as, as, um, as an RPG, it's not exactly deep, but there, there's fun to be had to see it, each of your characters kind of work <laughs> together. My uh, how much time I put into Pokemon Snap, and if I end up just playing that, you know, forever, then maybe I'll just stick with that. But uh, if, if I beat that real quick, I'll fair enough. Into Metopia. My mm-hmm. oldest daughter loves Metopia on the 3DS, right? I don't have it for Switch, um, but she told me the creepiest story about it one time. Oh, no. <laughs> so you know, I split time with her biological mother, so she's there half the time, and she's here half the time. And on one one day when she was coming home from her stretch at her uh, mother's house, she mentioned to me, she's like, hey, daddy, I've been playing a lot of Metopia. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I remember that game. It's all right. And she goes, yeah, you're in my party. I'm like, that's really cool. And she's like, and we're married. And I'm like, uh... hmm. <laughs> what? You have been led astray, my dear child. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, really uh, weird. Please burn your copy of Metopia. <laughs> Please take your 3DS and throw it into the closest body of water. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, and real quick to answer Adam Davis in the chat. No, Derek has four kids. I have four kids. He, you know, Amy has has uh, kids, and and Kai is the newest addition. Whereas uh, my my wife has has uh, kids that she brought to our marriage, and I made two people, <laughs> and so. <laughs> We, it's a community total of eight kids. I promise I don't have seven kids. I would be dead. Um, yeah, I can't even imagine. I, <laughs> I can't like, even I can't imagine. I'm sitting over here like, I can't imagine one kid, let alone seven. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. Ash, I'll just bring all my kids to your house, and then I'll go on vacation. It's fine. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, drop them off. Okay. Yeah. Uncle Ash, you can, you can watch them all. Uncle, nice. Ash, Uncle Ash will be asking to give them back in an hour. Trust me. I, I <laughs> Danilo, I mean, he says the truth is that Steve has seven kids, but Ash has negative three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, Wolf X Blake, this is cool. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know this because I haven't played it, but uh, they say Metopia's soundtrack slaps, to be fair. You there just got me track. interested. Yeah, there is good music. You just piqued my interest, man. Okay, now, now I know I got to check out the demo because I, I got to hear this music. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> I remember it being okay. I... I kind of was lukewarm on metopia in general but i'll I'll try the demo again 
uh, just to see. Anyway, our final quick story is that Resident Evil Reverse has been delayed until summer. Good. <laughs> yeah, um, well, we didn't get to play it because of the weird availability of it. But Steve, I know you got to play it and you were like, eh, I'm yeah, not sure about this. I mean, as something that... So I think it works really well as something that is free when you buy another game, which, I mean, that's the delivery vehicle for this thing. You buy RE8, you get Reverse for free. That, I think, is a good idea. Um, if they ever intend on making this a standalone product that people pay money for, it absolutely would not work. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not only that, but we kind of saw that the, you know, this is an online multiplayer game and the online infrastructure very clearly doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, more, more time is probably a good thing for this. And honestly, summer's not that far off. We're two months away. So that could mean any, anywhere between June and September, but eh, I, right. I, it's not a game where I'm so hyped for it that I'm going to worry about it. Like, if they told me, hey, right. we just can't, yeah. I'd probably be like, all right, cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we got mercenaries in, in Resident Evil 8, whatever. Yeah, I think this is yeah. like their B-level effort, where Resident Evil 8 is their triple A level. So yeah, it's like we're trying to, we're trying to put in... It's cool to do something new. Value. Yeah. Right. And right. and I'm all for it, but I'm not I'm not too broken up about it. Anyway, 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 mm -hmm. I got to keep this show moving. We got two more big stories to discuss, and I think these won't last as long. But uh, I'm gonna get this next one on screen here. Out of nowhere, as Asha <laughs> implied, <laughs> Nintendo just decided to update Super Mario Party after what three years? Just yeah, like two and a half years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're we're dropping an update. You're finally getting online play for Super Mario Party, which should have been here 700 days ago. But you know, better late than never, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. And this just happened overnight. Like I, I was up, as I said, I was up putting together the Famicom Detective Club preview, and then this rolls in, and I'm like, wow, this is really weird, and also pretty big like people have been wanting mario party online for how long how many years people have been clamoring for this and now super mario party suddenly has it for free two and a half years after its release you'd think they would just do super mario party 2 and launch it with online play but maybe that, that maybe that's what this is laying the groundwork for but it's I, cool. I, that's what a lot of people are suspecting i've seen a lot of people have made yeah. that suggestion that this is like maybe it's a test for super mario party 2 or next mario party to have multiplayer i don't know yeah this this is a I'm, great I'm, way to do it go ahead dr love i'm sorry oh uh yeah i was just gonna say i i, I really don't love this practice they did it with uh i, I, I kind of felt like i got burned with mario tennis and then i know they mm -hmm. also did it with kirby all-star or is uh what's that one the, the, the kirby game i didn't play that one star yeah. allies then, or star allies yeah star yeah. allies yeah there you go um and now they're doing it with this um you know of course it's great sort of like an Animal Crossing or Smash Ultimate where you know there's stuff coming, but when a game comes out, you play through it, and you're like, hmm, it's kind of light on content. And then, you know, like in this case, what, two or three years later, they're like, now it's worth playing. It's like, well, <laughs> no, it's already kind of already, you know, played it, and I don't really want to come back to it. Um, you know, if you told me there was going to be like a season pass kind of thing, like a Mario Rabbids was a good uh, model, I suppose. But this kind of like two years later surprise, don't you want to, jump back into the water um i don't love it um but on the other hand you know i, I don't want to be a negative nancy um it's great that they're you know improving a game that uh could use some improvements i like mario party um but it is yeah you know, just so far out of left field that um you know if i'd known i probably would have waited to to get these games until after they're fully updated i agree with that 100 percent. one thing mm -hmm. that i feel like is really weird is that uh, if this had had online a year ago, even, you know, let alone two years ago when the game came out, this could have been one of my most played pandemic games. Oh, God, this was perfect for the pandemic. Yeah, because I just keep thinking like, man, I'm excited now to play this. Like my my friend Nick and I, we have a, a weekly game night every Thursday where we, you know, we just pick a game and we play it. And uh, we keep talking about wanting to get our wives included you know, so that we could all play like a game together as a group because we used to hang out as like a larger group all the time. And Mario Party is kind of ideal for that. Like you don't need a ton of gaming skill or know how to play Mario Party. And so, <laughs> right. you know, I would, I'm, I'm actually going to probably suggest we play this this week just so I can 
uh, give it a shot, see how the online works. But I do agree with several of our folks in the audience in the chat here that are saying that this is probably a dry run for a Super Mario Party 2. Uh, Mm Because it would definitely make sense to take a game that has an install base and, you know, hey, we've we've uh, we want to make sure we get online right. So what what better way than to test it with people that are already out there playing a game? So because, you know, the eventual uh, Super Mario Party 2 will be largely based on on Super Mario Party's existing code. Probably. Mm -hmm. Hopefully focused on the parts that people enjoyed and they, uh, you know, uh, Take that to heart. Although uh, Vedron Hotek in the chat has a, f- a suggestion that I'm like, hmm, that would be cool too. Where uh, Nintendo 64 comes to Switch Online, which means Ooh. Mario Party 2 and 3. That's online what play. I want. Like Super Mario Party, I've played a lot of the Mario Party games, and Super Mario Party's fun. It's okay, but I think the boards are kind of lacking. Mini games yeah. are pretty good, but I think the boards themselves are pretty lacking especially compared to games like two, three and six. And I would love to get some of those classic in 64 games. I know GameCube obviously isn't happening, but I would love to get, you know, one, two or three Mm -hmm. or all of them uh, online through Nintendo switch online. That would be so cool. Um, But Nintendo 64 is like a multiplayer machine. Like that is like it having online play through switch online. That's almost a sell for the switch online itself, just because it's such a, yeah, imagine Bomberman 64 coming to it. Yo, all I, that oh, online. all yeah. I need is Mario Kart 64 Block Fortress online. Like, give me that. Right. right. I will. I, I'll never need that to be play sick. another game on my Switch again. <laughs> I can be pretty cool if we got Smash 64. 64 as well. That would be pretty cool yeah, yeah, to be able to play online. At the same time, yeah. Smash exactly. 64, exactly. F-Zero X. Yeah, Nintendo 64. Like, that would be... Yeah, that'd be huge. N64 games online. Um, mm-hmm. If that ever happens, I mean, that'll be... I don't know if it would really be a system seller, though. I don't know if that would be the kind of thing that would convince someone who wasn't going to buy a Switch to buy one. But well, I that's know necessarily a Switch, happy. but existing Switch Probably owners to get a Switch online is more my was more what I was trying to say. Yeah, I think you're right. right, yeah. Oh, man, Fantasy Thinker fan says GoldenEye Online would be a dream. <sighs> yes, it would. It almost oh, happened. Yeah. It almost happened, yep. but unfortunately, which was uh, shut down by corporate red tape, but that would have been so cool um my my thing about super mario party is like i get why they did it but i i it's a shame that they changed the branding because i love the absurdity of just saying oh yeah mario party 10 just came out like just keep it going oh hey mario party 12 is coming out soon like i wanted to see how high they were going to take it but Mm -hmm. i get why they rebranded it it makes sense all right well one one final story before we move on to the spicy post show and uh derek you're we, I know you're going to have a lot to say on this one. Uh, so this, this story comes courtesy of uh, Dreamcast Sega Info on Twitter. Uh, it's also in French. So uh, it looks like, <laughs> however, the, the basic premise of it is, is that Castlevania Resurrection uh, for the Dreamcast, an unreleased game, has been dumped. Uh, I don't know anything about this game. So, uh, Derek, why don't you fill in the blanks for us on this one? I mean, we, we spoke about this in a previous uh, uh, TNT where, you know, it was, it was supposed to come to the Dreamcast and end up getting canceled. It was going to star Sophia Belmont along with a, a completely oh, right. new uh, Belmont. Um, it was a, we don't know exactly what her uh, whole role in it was or anything like that, but, um, you know, it seemed to be lost. And now it's hey it's it's back it's we have a chance and it, it has issues it's not like a complete you're not going to go level to level to level right. and it uh, all that stuff but you can at least check out the basis of it and see how it all works i've not had a chance to download it myself um but it's uh, it, it's a awesome piece of castlevania uh history and i i want to try it out i need to i need to sit down and uh play this <laughs> you know get a little bit of time to uh, download it so I'll probably look into that um pretty soon and try to do any a fan Derek yes I actually uh, um did a uh streaming series a year and a half ago now something like that where I played through every single English Eng- English release so every English release yeah English <laughs> English so yeah uh, I've played like all 34 35 games so oh nice I yeah yeah I love Der- Derek I- is Oh, good. I was just say, yeah, I love Castlevania, even the even the three D ones. Um, I, the original mm-hmm. one I beat about four hundred times in a failed attempt to get the world record. Wow, uh, Castlevania oh, is 
Wow, was, nice. Uh, oh, I mean, I didn't get. I was like a minute off, but um, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, Castlevania is a fantastic series, and I haven't played this uh, Dreamcast game either. Um, I think I will give it a shot just because I'm a huge Castlevania head. Yeah, yeah. No, this is so cool that this is available now, and I yeah, I really want to see you play it, Derek, because you are like you know a veritable Castlevania. Just you know, you're obviously such a massive expert on the series, and I, I know I don't know if I'm an expert yet, but I know at least I like to play them. <laughs> I feel like you are. Maybe me. I, I thought you. I feel like you are. But I feel like if I know you're going to agree with me on this. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I feel like if you've played 34 games in any series, you're probably an exactly. expert. <laughs> I just feel like if we can get Castlevania Resurrection dumped, which I think is so cool, now it's time. It's time that we also get Mega Man Legends 3 Prototype Edition. It's time, man. It's gotta, I love it, dude. Love it. Oh, if that, if that happen. happens, that needs to be... You're live streaming that immediately. Oh, I, I will I will go out and I'll buy whatever Ash rig I need to to be able probably, to play it. We'll probably both live stream it. <laughs> oh yeah, we both would. Absolutely, yeah, because you're a big Mega Man Legends fan as well. Yeah, as well. Uh, the there. Legends is what got me into Mega Man. So yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, uh, but I, I love this. I love when when canceled projects or or you know things that otherwise would never have seen the light of day do, and, and they and they make it out into the public. And so I, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, play this, man. Yeah, I don't know where they got this. I don't know if this is brand new artwork for Sophia. Um, for for this box art they I, they kind of have for this whole thing, but she is breaking her hip. <laughs> that artwork, <laughs> that one bit of artwork, um, and I, they have a like you look at the screenshots and they have a topless uh, Medusa in one of the screenshots. It's like mm, I don't think that's gonna fly. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> apparently it didn't. Right. So yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they're like, ah, it's too much work to put. I know they're trying to, uh, you know, capture the feel of a the the, you know actual release, but mm, I don't know about that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, y'all. Well, with that, I think we've covered all of yesterday's and and some of today's news. Uh, But before we go, uh, and look, we made it through. We lived. Yeah. Uh, So, Doctor Lava, my good friend, uh, where can our where can our lovely audience find you and the and the content you create? Oh, uh, I'm just Doctor Lava on Twitter, and um, I write for Did You Know Gaming. I write scripts for them, so just uh, you know, tune in. Yeah, I I saw a recent piece that you wrote for Did You Know Gaming. Um, Very, it was like a pretty recent Pokemon video. I feel. I. I try um, to I, remember who writes those videos because I know that they have, you know, the setup where somebody writes, another person voices, another person edits, which is like right, the ideal right. setup, right? But <laughs> uh, I did. The last one was we had Nabu Gasawara. Who was yes. The, uh, he was the guy who, um, speaking of, I guess, lost media, um, he was the guy who translated the first 26 Pokemon games into English at Nintendo of America. Mm-hmm. And um, he got kind of laid off due to like an office restructuring after Pokemon Platinum, after Generation 4. Um, but uh, he came on and agreed to give kind of like local localized English names to about 50 lost, all the, all the lost Pokemon ones That's who so were cool. you know, kind of lost media. If he had, um, uh, you know, if they hadn't kind of imagining a parallel universe where if they hadn't got cut, here's what he would have named them. Um, so that was fun. And then actually there's a, I'm working with knob right now. Um, there's an old 1996 Pokemon book that was only released in Japan. Um, right after the games released, um, it was before Mew was even public and, uh, knobs translating. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but it's got some really cool lore and some other, um, development nice. info and knobs translating it for an upcoming video. And he's going to put on a white lab coat and kind of, uh, make an appearance as Professor Knob. You know, welcome to the Pokemon oh, nice. world. And nice. all that. So that's cool. Be fun. That is super cool. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's Thanks, really Josh. awesome to have you on. I'm a huge fan yeah. of your work. I mentioned this in the lost episode of TNT, but, uh, uh, thanks to thanks to your <laughs> videos, I became aware of the existence of probably my favorite cut Pokemon, uh, Gorochu, which I had never oh, okay. I never knew Raichu was supposed to evolve, man. And now I feel like I'm living in an alternate timeline. <laughs> Gorochu's cool, yeah. yeah. So hopefully someday yeah, we'll get Gorochu. Hopefully. I like uh, Norowara, that uh, creepy. It's like a straw Chinese voodoo doll, basically. Oh, yeah, uh, with with a nail going through it. Um, I don't know. I kind of like 
I like when they introduce kind of like creepy stuff to, I don't know, like a series like Pokemon or Animal Crossing where it's like a little too creepy for the franchise, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. probably should be. But I think those are kind of the most interesting yeah. uh, things that, you know, get cut. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah thanks thanks for having me like <laughs> Which just... <laughs> uh, yeah, he's... Yeah, I don't know if I would really call him creepy. He's a haunted sandcastle. <laughs> but he also like drowns Pokemon in the sand, so it's like. Mm. <laughs> well, if you, if the Dex entries get dark pretty quick when you start to read. Oh, yeah. Weird. Some some in this out. book. Oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was say, in in this book it talks about uh, Gengar. Uh, there's like a picture. It's an official book um, published by Creatures. There's like a picture of some dude with a mustache and Gengar appearing out of the shadows behind him, and it just the caption in Japanese says. Like sometimes Gengar appears from the shadows to take a life. Um, oh, wow. so, what? what? You're right. And the, the, the guy's oh, man. Face, the guy's face is him, like just starting to turn around and see that he's about to get murdered by Gengars. It's a pretty wild Japanese book. Nice. Like drinking, <laughs> well, drinking Moltres blood to gain immortality. Uh, it's pretty bizarre. So it's, what yeah, the hell? It's pretty, well, it's pretty I need right. to see this. So that's going to be on Did You Know Gaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, nice. I, I don't know. I don't have to tell you all to go subscribe to Digino you know Gaming. You probably already are. But if you aren't, <laughs> please, please go subscribe. Support our good friend, Dr. Lava here, as well as all the other talented people at Digino you know Gaming. Uh, but with that, uh, we have to give a, a thank you to all of our patrons for helping to make this show possible. We, we love you guys. We appreciate you so much. You let us do the things that we love to do. Um, but obviously with that. Uh, we have to give a special thank you to our patrons at the producer tier. Uh, you guys, your generosity really helps keep the lights on here at GVG. I can't uh, thank you enough. We've started to see subscriptions go up, patrons come, uh, you know, pledges go up, and it really means the world to us that you're willing to support us like that. And of course, finally, a massive thank you to our patrons at the executive producer tier and above. And I know y'all know what's coming next. Those fine folks go. are Jared Edinger. Brandon Bovia, Rob Arman X, Itiono Ben, Dan and Twistle, Dennis J, Z Patty, Hyrule Hermit, Sky Blue Flames, Adam O'Sullivan, It's ATM, Octo Puppet, Richard Herrera, Michael Phone, Floating Mew, Aiko Carroll, Christopher, The D Pad, Vesmio, Waffle King, Nick Waterman, Kitty Kong Facts, Angel Martinez, Vedron Hotik, Macalau, John, Joshua Hunter, Evernight Studio, Benny Yao, Alessia, Azran127, Ken Rule09, Jake Pelka, Geller, Joseph Rutkin, Titus Malvolio, Charlie Bird, Geeky Griffin, Lucky Wonderfish, Top Dog23100, Young Ben Kenobi, Douglas Chomix, Andrew Medeiros, Orem M. Patrick Harrison, Becca, Rocks the Cat, Fizzywig Hoyd, Flaming Highwayman, Sean Garrett, The Legend of Groose, Eddie B, Kai Ed, Kit Fisto, West Egg, Master Links, Sean Davis, Deanith, Jackson Jordan, Michael McCaw, Matthew Wong, Ashish Joshi, Goron Amber, Straight Lace, Hooby, Wolf X Blake and Moon Macarons, Kane, Captain Finlandia, 60 minutes and 60 seconds, The Game Orb, Dano the Artist, Ravelox, Synchro Lord, Brainchild, My Mom, Hi Mom, Kotar Peck, Scuff196, Skull Kid Tiger, AJB Cool, Jason Uloa, Jaden Buck, Phantom Project, Wheezy Penguin, Anthony Wilson Jr., Sakuragi, and Finally, our newest EP in the EP squad, Darik. Thank you so, so much. And remember, so that much. you can become a patron mm -hmm. over at patreon.com slash gvgaming, where you can watch today's news tonight live and enjoy our exclusive post show for as little as $5 a month. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Good Vibes Gaming for more good times like these. And until next time, good night and good vibes. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everybody.